go. We just um, how it went down. Yeah, it's funny they they don't in Europe. Um, really mind boggling. Are you like set up like the cold water bottle behind a fan? <laughs> That's what I saw people in like Germany doing, and I was like, oh man, was, wow, like, <laughs> get some air AC units. Yeah. Uh, what's up, everyone? We're gonna get started in like two minutes. Um, everyone, okay. okay. All right, we got, we've got a quorum. Uh, hello, we're joined by Ebenezer today. And this is a Log Rocket meetup. Thanks for joining. Um, yeah, so we're going to hang out, learn about GraphQL and Next.js apps. I shouldn't be capitalized. Um, yeah, uh, recording was going to be sent after if you can't stay the whole time. Um, and if you have any questions, leave them in the chat or the Q&A section. I'll try to get to them during, but most of them we'll, we'll get to after. Um, so yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, this meetup's brought to you by LogRocket. Um, if you've never heard of LogRocket, we've got a great blog, which is how you found us here. Uh, but we also have a, a really great product, um, which is a front-end application monitoring solution for web and mobile apps. Um, so we combine typical error tracking, error aggregation, along with digital experience monitoring. So that's more like product analytics, Google analytics, and then, you know, React or Next.js Next performance monitoring too. So like we're, we're monitoring all of those really key performance indicators on the client side, rather than all these backend tools, which, which do your server side stuff. Um, and since we're talking about GraphQL today, I thought I'd kind of show you how LogRocket kind of tracks GraphQL requests to make sure that they're actually functioning. So here's the LogRocket dashboard. Um, and what we're doing is kind of recording everything someone does within your application and then replays it, right? So you can immediately reproduce issues and you know figure out what happened. Um, so we're actually looking at a, a session of LogRocket itself, a little confusing. If we go to our GraphQL API though, we can go see a bunch of awesome stuff. So this is to our, actually I want this one. There's our GraphQL API. This is our user endpoint within GraphQL. And you can go see exactly all of the key value pairs within the GraphQL request. And obviously it was a 200, so it was a successful request. Um, it's really easy when you're you know debugging GraphQL, making sure something was supposed to happen that did um, and really kind of inspect all of the uh, you know important information when you're looking at a specific request in GraphQL. Um, so yeah, with that, I'll shut up. Take it away, Ebenezer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, everyone. Um, I'm so glad to be here and to join you in talking about GraphQL. So I should get my slides right now. Yeah. Next, yes, plus GraphQL. These are like very two important technologies in my life. Um, I've used GraphQL for a long time. I've not used GraphQL so much recently, but I used GraphQL for a long time. Um, first, I'm working on a current huge pro project that doesn't use it. And next year, I, I currently use next year. The first time I used next year um, was the, the, like that was the only um, argument I needed to stay with Next.js on first use, I knew that this was a framework for me. And because before Next.js, I tried out other frameworks and Next.js is a framework built on top of React. I tried out other frameworks and um, it was it just wasn't clicking. But when I got to Next.js, I stayed there. And that's why I use Next.js next until today. My name is Epinis Don. I'm a software engineer. Um, I'm also a content creator. So you can check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Epinis Don. And you're gonna see um, my video. I have tutorial videos, programming videos um, that you find there on GraphQL, on React and um, web development. I am currently building new dev.io, a learning platform for new developers. So you can check it out, um, that'd be cool and see what our community is up to. And um, so first of all, why Next.js? I just talked about how I love Next.js, but why do I like Next.js this much? Um, Next.js has lots of inbuilt functionalities. 
An example is a precaution. I wish I could show you an, okay, I, I can actually, I can show you the demo app, the demo application. So this is what, this is the demo application for this talk. And um, an input functionality with Next.js is precaution, for example, this, with Next.js, we can create um, multi-page applications, not SPA, just like if you're using Bear React, you know that you're going to create an SPA, um, single page application, which is going to be rendered on the client side. With Next.js, you get your multi-page application, which is very good for SEO. Um, but one very good thing about next year is that doesn't need any extra configuration is that my multi-page application looks and feels like a single page app so if i scroll down right now and i'm not going to the next page which is a different page the next page is not um the same page with different contents the next page is a completely different page um once i click this is local host, so it's going to be faster anyway. <laughs> let me go to the hosted application so this is a um, please you're not sharing your screen i'm not sharing my screen Nope, not yet. Wow. I thought I was. Or oh, it stopped automatically. I just there started you go. Just... There you go. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I'm so sorry. So where was I? Oh, thank you for letting me know. So you didn't get to see my beautiful slide. This was the start of my slide. Next year's plus GraphQL. Um, and you probably heard me ramble for five minutes. This is me right now, my intro. This is my face on uh, picture. And I'm a software engineer, content creator, I'm currently building in dev.io. And then I'm right here. So why next year? With I'm currently explaining lots of input functionalities. And please let me know if anything is wrong with my audio or you can hear me. Um, there's no way for me to see the chats. So I'll, I'll be depending on look. And I was right here with the multi-page application. Um, this is the URL. You can go check out the demo application right now. Multi-next GraphQL, multi-next dash GraphQL, the Vercel app. You can open it, open it up and um, you see what I'm talking about. So this is the application right now. And the next page, if I click on this next page button, I want, I want to go to the next page. Now, what I was explaining is that unlike React, your regular React, which is um, a single page application that has everything done um, on the client, um sorry okay unlike your regular react how do i get this to leave my screen i don't know if this is distracting what you can see right here at the top i don't know if you can see it or if it's distract the, the you are sharing your screen um information but i don't know how to remove it and um okay it's gone yeah now for the next page if i want to go to the next page it's going to be a whole new page. It's not going to be the same page. It's not going to be the same blank HTML, which has JavaScript rendering everything again with a new data. It's going to be a different page. But with Next.js, once I click Next page, I have the Next page open up for me. And it's not an SPA. It's a multi-page application. But what Next.js helps us do is um, prefetch the Next page and then stores it somewhere so that once we click on it, it just gives us that Next page. So these are some of the really cool things about Next.js that are inbuilt. We don't have to do so many things ourselves. So all this, this is a single page. This is a multi-page application, but it's seamless and basically works like a single page application. You'll, you will notice, you won't see any load time in between. Um, so it has, it also has this fast compile time. And luckily this came with the, with Next.js version 12 with the Rust compiler. So the development experience is much, much better um, than before, than before the version 12 and then many other front-end frameworks out there. So this fast compile time um, is easy to get started with. So getting started with Next.js is as easy as getting started with React and create React app. So you're going to get started with React. You just go to your terminal, do NPX, create React app. Same with Next.js, create Next app, and you have your Next.js application. So it's easy to get started with. And the documentation is also user-friendly. So it's readable, it's human-readable. You can read it and understand it. The team is doing a really great job there. It's easy to host also. So um, you can get started with Next.js. You don't need to pay any extra fee. You can just get started with Next.js. Go, go over to Percel.com, host your Next.js app. And it's it's really easy to host Next.js applications, especially on Vercel. So Vercel does this really good integrations with your Next.js apps. But you can host Next.js apps outside of Vercel on other platforms. Um, but it's easy to host. That's the main point. It's well documented. I've talked about documentation. Um, it, Next.js has a huge community. So it's unlikely that you'll be the first person to encounter many issues. Since the community is large, 
um, you, you encounter a problem, you go to Google Stack Overflow search for it, you're going to see uh, most of the time you're going to see the answer there. And if you don't, you um, send a request, make, um, you, you raise an issue in the GitHub repository, you ask GitHub, yeah, or you ask any question, I get an answer. So I've interfaced with the community team, with the Next.js team um, a couple of times, and they were responsive. So even though I'm not paying for the product, um, SSR, server side rendering, um, server side generation on ISR. So Next.js supports both server side rendering. Um, server side generation and incremental static um, regeneration. So server side rendering, you you might have heard of SSR before, and this with SSR it means that uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript um, is going to be rendered on the server and then sent to us um, while the user is trying to access the page. So, but with SSG, it's everything is going to be done during build. So during compile time, once you build your application, everything is it, Next.js is going to take all of the JavaScript you've written, all the HTML, CSS, compile that, give you your different pages. Your different your different uh, um, pages in your application, and then you're going to host that compiled website. Um, but with SSR, that's going to be done on the server when user requests for the page, and then that page is going to be um, brought to you. Now, ISR is like, um, and I use ISR in most of my Next.js apps. Um, ISR is a combination of both SSR and SSG hybrid, which is really cool, and which is one thing I love about Next.js, especially because we can start with SSG. We can start with um, server-side um, rendering, have our multi-page applications, but what if data changes? So when we generate our application, first of all, with the data that's available during compile time, and we put that on the server. Now, what if data changes? What if your, your application is the kind that you're going to be getting new data every time, or maybe user updates their data every time? What are you going to do? Are you going to start building the application again to host with the new data? So with ISR, um, Next.js is going to be watching the database, the API, and when anything changes, it's going to just supply that, you know, we generate the page with the new data. So your application is always going to be up to date with ISR. And it's using ISR does not need any extra configuration with next year's. You just use it. And I'm going to show you an example. Um, so GraphQL, I've talked about next year's. Um, and then I want to use Next.js with GraphQL applications. Why GraphQL? And one reason I like GraphQL so much is that it's fast. So GraphQL is relatively fast. And, and this is because of um, the fact that it's flexible. You can easily customize your request. Um, many REST APIs, it's it's not so easy to get specific data. You have to fetch. Uh, sometimes you, you have, that's why the next one says overfetching and underfetching. Sometimes you have to fetch a bunch of data, a bulk data, just to get one out of it. So with GraphQL, you can customize your um, request so that you can you get exactly the data you want, exactly the data you want, um, and in the, in the exact format you want, in the exact structure you want it. So that's with GraphQL is fast. Um, no overfetching or underfetching. So since you can just customize your request to get the exact data you want, you, you, there's, you're not going to face the issue of overfetching or underfetching. So if you're underfetch, you have to fetch multiple times to get data. And if you overfetch, you have to fetch um, a large amount of data to get just a little thing out of it. Um, easy integration with already existing REST APIs. So you have a REST API already. You have a GraphQL API. You, you want to start using GraphQL with your REST API. You can easily integrate it with the REST API. Strongly typed also. Um, and then automatic documentation. Like the an example we'll see today is with the documentation for this weekend multi-character app. So with GraphQL, you can always be sure that there's going to be documentation. There are people who build the REST APIs and they don't provide documentation for users and users are wondering what's happening so and even even if they don't do it um even the task of you providing that documentation for rest api with rest apis is not always easy you have to start trying to create the specific request separately after writing your code um after you know your database schema and all that you now have to start writing the request and telling people how exactly they have to use the api um the, ex the exact this is not documentation in text, it's documentation in request. So you, the, the exact request that you have to call to get particular things. But with a GraphQL API, you know that there's always going to be documentation. It's auto-generated. Um, oh, you, you can come to the doc sections and then you see the different types of um, different requests right here. So we have character, for example, um, to get but, um, character, a character for our, um, this is a weekend multi-character app here. So to get specific characters, we can have an example right here. and. Um, right now is that I, I'm not sure of the number of people that already know GraphQL, but this is for the sake of those that don't know GraphQL. And um, let's do this. So I wanted to I want to um, 
start with an example. So characters right here, and let's get, I hit control and then space. And I wanna get info and I wanna get results from character. And then with this API also, you get things like um, error checking. So if I hit run right now, look at this, we have an error. So info must have a selection of subfields. Do you mean, so there are other things that are on that info and then we want to provide them. So we want to provide counts for characters, how many characters, um, pages, how many pages, next and previous and all that. So let's have the subfields for info right here. And let's try again. And we should have another error, yeah. Must have a selection of field results, must have a So you can always be sure that you're working with Graph Pure. You're not going to be left stranded. You're going to see um, information on how to achieve the various things you want. So on that resource, we want the ID for each character, name, status, um, species. And let's try again. So we try again and look at that. So we are getting 826 pages, 42, 42 pages as the info right here. And then I think the count of the total characters is 826. And I think we're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now with GraphQL, which we're going to see later on in our schema when we go back to the code base, instead of getting just, uh, instead of getting ID, name, status, species, we can decide that we want to get um, only, only the number of total characters. So let's remove pages with our request. And then we want to get only um, name, only ID and name without status and special. And let's call that. So look at that. We have the exact thing we asked for in the exact format we wanted. So let's say one name before ID. So this is name and ID. And let's try that again. And look at that. We have name before ID, Rick Sanchez, ID as one. So um, the GraphQL's flexibility is really impressive. The automatic documentation, you can always be sure that um, you'll get help there with the strongly typed, you, you can always be sure that you're going to get help uh, when making that request. And um, so now we have NetJS plus GraphQL. We want to now combine these two powerful technologies together um, to, for, to have a flexible applications, to have a fast applications. So integrating the GraphQL API with a Next.js app. And the, remember I said, this is the example we want to use um, right now. So I'm on localhost right now, and this is the weekend multi-character app. And um, I'm going to show you what I've done. And this code base, I think I left the link to the code base on the slides. So that should be somewhere here. Yeah. So this is a link, the link to the code base, github.com slash epinizadon slash nextgs graphql multi app. So that's a link to the code base, github.com slash epinizadon slash nextgs um, hyphen graphql hyphen multi hyphen app. So that's a link to the code base. You can check it out. And um, when you open up the code base, I've sectioned the different um, parts I want to take you through. So there's the there are different branches there's the branch uh, where you get just client side rendering there's one where you get client side rendering with a hook with a u square hook which makes things easy there's the one where you get um, a graphql lab without any pagination you see how that is implemented and then the one where you get a graphql lab with pagination which is what's hosted um, in our main branch so here we start with client side rendering with a u square hook um, which is what I prefer if I'm using, if I'm going to render up my GraphQL client side. And what, what that means is um, for client side rendering right now, if we go back to our application and let's reload that page. Now see, there's a difference between when we go to the main, the one that's hosted, there's one of, of that's done on the server um, that's generated for us, we're not rendering on the client, uh, which, is, which is what you find on the main branch. And then if I go back to my application, uh, I think I need to restart, do I need to? Yeah, I need to restart my server since I've switched. So if I go back to my application with this, and then I reload my page. So look at this. The page is what's coming to me. I'm not getting an empty HTML file, and then the data starts being fetched on the client. So the GraphQL request has been made on the client. Um, everything is, was already made when I built my application. So when we ran dev, um, everything was compiled, and then we fetch, we open up this page, and that page is just given to us. Our GraphQL page with all the characters comes directly to us, not an empty HTML file with JavaScript trying to generate um, our data. We have that page given to us, and that's what you find in the main branch. But now with client side generation, um, client side rendering rather, with client side rendering, um, I'll need to restart again. Now with client side rendering, what that means is that our GraphQL request is going to be made on the browser, on the client. With server side rendering, those um, static um, SSG 
that tick regeneration what's just, that is just now um that that's going to be done during period time but with client side rendering the graphql for the other one the graphql request is going to be done um during period time yeah it's going to be made during period time why is why it's been compiled that graphql request the data is going to be fetched and then that data is going to be used to generate our pages to give us our pages but with client side rendering the graphql request is done on the client so that when we reload that page you notice that we have this load time where our graphql request is being made before you see our data so that's the difference and um how how's client side rendering done now there are different ways you can work with graphql in nextjs apps in react applications in general but my most preferred way is um or my preferred way is using apple client apple client makes things seamless make things seamless so you install apple client with um at Apollo slash client. So yarn install or npm install at Apollo slash client. You have your Apollo client um, package. And then you can now import Apollo clients um, and in-memory cache rather to create your client. Now, in-memory cache right here is what we are using to cache our data. Um, that means that if we call, if if we make a request, for example, with our GraphQL app application um we try to get the the first page for example and then want to do make that same request in a different component uh, apollo, apollo server is not going to start trying to go back to a server to give us a request no the the first request we made is going to be cached already so that if you want to make that exact same request uh, apollo, apollo server is just going to take the results um from what we've already done before and give it to us so that's what we are in memory cache for right here so the every request we made is cached and then if we need to make that request anywhere um we can easily and that's that's one good thing about um one way we can do state management with graphql too so right here i have um if you come to queries this is the same thing as you saw just um this yeah this is disturbing me the the hover i have on top of this place Okay, so this is the same thing you saw right here. So the an example of the different queries you made right here. So that's the same thing we have here. And we're using GQL from Apollo clients to create our query. And we name it gets all characters. And this is just a convention for naming queries so that you, you know that this is a query. Um you, you separate it with underscore and then with capital letters so so that when you say query you see a normal variable you see a function you know that this one is a query and this is our query right here. Now, how do we use our query? If we now take this query and um, go over to the card.js, the index.js component, for example, where we imported get all characters. To use this query, I'll, I'll come back here in a short while to explain this, um, where every other thing that's going on to you. To use this query called um, get all characters, we're using client.query. Now, if we you, if we make this request, first of all, in this index.js file, and then later on, we come to another component, card.js, to make that same request, um, we're not going to go back to the server to get that data. That's going to be cached for us already. And then this component is going to use what's already cached. And we have, um, yeah, so back to our Apollo config.js file where we created our clients. Now we've exported our clients. And to use our clients, now we can go back to index.js file. And then we remember we created our query inside of the queries.js file. We have get all characters from queries. And then um, the reason this is wrapped in use effects, in a use effect hook right here is because um, if in Next.js, remember that Next.js is compiles everything um, during build. So if we take this outside of our use effect hook and we have um, we have a function, let's say we ignore this await keyword right here, client or query, and then we query this. While Next.js is trying, remember, remember we want to do this on the client. We want to do this um, graph, make this graph real request on the client, not during build time. but well, when we build the application, Next.js is going to look at, like run everything. Next.js is going to try to make this request also um, during build time. It's likely that that's going to happen. And then same thing with every other thing that you can find here. But if we put this in a use effect hook, when Next.js sees this, it's going to skip it. So this that means that this request is not going to be made um, during build time. It's only going to be made on the client um, after the, the page is ready. So this request is now going to be going to be made for us. So um, anytime you want Next.js to skip anything um, in your application, you put it in the use effect hook during build, and then that's going to be skipped for you. So if, if we put it in the use effect, we don't have that anymore. So what, this is only good. This request is only going to be made um, on the client. And this is how we used client right here from Apollo config to make our query. So uh, we are getting data and error from 
this um, client's query request. And then we have an object with a query, get all characters. And this is data which we are setting um, using our use state hook. And then we have error right here if there's any error message. Now, um, it's much easier to do though with the, um, what is called the use query hook. And this is what I'll use if I were building mine. I'll use the use query hook instead because it's, it's much more straightforward. With the use query hook, we just import the use query hook and then use it this way. But um, we'll need to wrap uh, up the GS file. So if you come to this underscore up the GS file, this is like the um, main app, the, the, the index, just like if you're working with regular React, you have that app.js file that everything comes on that. So this is the same thing for Nexus. You have this app.js file that then takes in all of the components right here on line eight. So we are now wrapping everything inside of the Apollo provider and providing client um, right here from Apollo config. With this done, we can just simply um, use this to get all of our characters. And there's still that chance that this request is going to be made um, during build time. Uh, but I still prefer this method because it's much simpler. And um, it's it's also good for, um, what was this called? It's also good for infinite scrolling. Yeah, infinite scrolling pagination. And speaking of pagination, so let's go back to the one with, we'll soon be done. Let's go back to the one without pagination, first of all. So this is for client-side rendering. Now let's go for the static um, sites generation yeah i remember that so this is for static site generation where everything is going to be done for us during build time the graphql request is going to be made for us during build time and all that and for that we need to put a graphql request in the get so this is still the index of js file in a get static prop so next is going to be looking for this get static props method we just need to export it from whatever um, file whatever components we're using so index of js file in the in this case and then when we export get static props what we have inside of get static props is um a client we are you remember we have client from the apollo config.js file and this is client.query and then our query has get of characters and then this is our data now when we get that data what we'll do next is supply this data as props to our components in this same file. So in this case, it's the home component. Supply this data. So as we can supply anything, we can make any request we want to make and supply it as props right here. And that prop is going to be accessible to the component in the file. So right here, we're supplying data um, data dot characters. So we're getting characters from the data. This is as props, and then we have characters. And now we can access characters from props from the home props so this is first going to be this um request is first going to be made um during build time and then we have the data and then the home component is going to be used that characters which is supplied at props on line 34 and now we can use characters in our graphql um multi character app and uh, so this is how it's done with this without pagination we can just go test it out um real quick if we reload that page i think i'll need to I probably need to okay so if we reload that page we just have this and this is this is our, it's, it's by default i think about 20 characters by default um except we start adding pagination and which we're going to see next which is the last one um for with pagination so, so this is without pagination we just make that call but with pagination and the reason there's a it's a different method of doing um the one with pagination is that remember we want different pages uh, let me check if I have any message. Okay, no. Remember, we want different um, pages in our GraphQL app. During build time, all these pages are going to be generated from us. We're not going to have just one HTML page that is going to do the um, whole GraphQL making requests for each page, and then you're, you're going to start using JavaScript to generate that or the clients. All the pages are going to be created for us during build time. And then whenever we fetch page two, Page two with all HTML, CSS, JavaScript is going to come to us. Page three, page three is going to come to us. And we're not going to be making any extra requests during um, um, in the on the client. So for that, let's go to the with pagination branch. And the imp implementation is quite different because right now I've introduced a new page, a new um, a new file rather, which is named page.js wrapped in square brackets. Now, if you want to create them um, dynamic pages 
So because we can't possibly start creating different pages for page one, we'll name a page page one and then create another one page two and then create another one page three and for page three, we'll fetch page three, page four, page five, we can't do that. So we can have dynamic pages instead in Next.js. And to create dynamic pages in Next.js that can have diff, um, like dynamic names. So dynamic routes in Next.js, we, we wrap um, the name of the file in square brackets. It doesn't need to be names page, it can be named anything. And I'll show you the relationship with the name and what we have in the code. So this can be named anything, but you just have to keep that name consistent with whatever you're doing inside of the get static pass method, which I'm going to show you now. So you wrap it in the, um, what's it called? The square brackets and then .js. And then you, you can use that to now create your dynamic pages. Now, in just applications, inside of pages, can't believe I didn't explain this first. So, um, but it's probably going to be familiar to you if you work with React. Um, Next.js is going to look for this pages directory. And then whatever you put here is going to, you can use that to have your different pages. So for example, we have this pages directory and we have um, hello.js. Now, if we do, um, let, me, let me just give an example, our FC right here, hello.js. And then we come back to application and go to local 3000 slash hello. We should have, yeah, we should have this hello.js right there, that page for So that's how Next.js works with pages. And we can delete that. And now back here. So now the, that's the same thing we want. We want um, localhost 3000 or our base URL slash um, the page one or page two or page three or page four or page five and so on. That's where we have this right inside of pages. Now, inside of pages, we have a um, get static paths. First of all, this is how we're going to start um, generating all our paths from page one to the number of pages that we have in total. And right here we have um, data, which is equal to um, our each client.query. So we are getting that data right now. And then number get page info. So first of all, I created another um, query for just getting the page info. Remember, we don't need to do any, we don't need to overfetch or underfetch. You can just ex get exactly the page info. That's the number of pages right here. Characters, info, and pages. That's, that's the only thing we want. We want just the page info. And when we get the page info, we number of pages plus one and then we get um we want to get each of the pages are we of pages if the page is named either one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so what we just would want to use this to get an array of like all the different number of pages so number one number two number three number four number five and so on and then right here we have paths cons pass equal to are we of pages dot and this is where we are um the path is going to be an array of the different paths, params right here, and then we have page. Now, this page right here is important. It has to be named page because the name of the file is page. So this is why I said you can use any file name you want. But if you want to use any other thing like ID or username or any other thing, that has to be what you're supplying to params right here. So if this is ID, this has to be ID. And if this is username, this has to be username. So right here we have page. And then this is what we supply. So um, this is wrapped in um, this template literal just because page has to be string and not number. And instead of having, because right now what we're going to have is locals 3000 slash one or slash two or slash three. We can have locals 3000 slash page one or page two or page three and so on and so forth. And um, so right here, we, we, now, we are now returning pass and then we're setting fallback as false. Um, do I remember what exactly fallback as false does? This was nine months ago. Um, let me see. No, I don't fallback false. Just one second. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So with fallback false, any pass not returned by get static props is going to generate the fall for page. Um, so like any part that's not here, and then we try to do localhost 3000 slash something else, we, we get that for for page. Um, so we, but if fallback is not set to false, I think fallback can be set to, um, should be blocking right here. If fallback is not set to false, any part that's not, um, returned to, uh, any part that does not exist during build time is good. 
instead of NextJS to return 404 directly, NextJS is going to check whether that part now exists, whether that data now exists in that page, whether there's a new page, if it's, if there's a new page 1000, if we're trying to access page 1000, and when we build the application, there was no page 1000, NextJS will check if there's now a page 1000 um, from our API. And then if that's the case, we're going to get page 1000. But we fall back as false. If that's not there, we get that 404 page. And then we now have guest static props. So with guest static props, we can now use um, paths uh, we should be able to use okay with guest added props. We, we're just getting uh, we're making our request with uh, for get all characters again, and then um, variables for our get all characters because right now I want to get page, and then we added variables right here, which is page as integer right here. So that's why we now have variables for get all characters page, and then for each page that we returned right here, um, right here. So params we're getting page from params right here. And then for each of those page, this page from params, and then we are now fetching for each of that page. So we have we are fetching for page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, and then when we do all that, we get a uh, um, application with all of the different pages. Um, but for with pagination, I don't I don't know how many applications use pagination this way these days. It's usually with um, while you're scrolling, you get that uh, most infinite scroll. Yeah, but if if you if you if you have like ten thousand pages. Maybe you don't want to generate all of the 10,000 pages at once, but that depends on the application and what you're building. But what I use mostly in my application, in my apps, um, is Infinite Scroll, and I do that on the client. And so this is with pagination. And when we do this, we have our application with all of the different pages generated for us during build time so that if we load up our application, instead of the GraphQL if it requires to be, um, is this my internet? Can you still see me? Uh, so let me restart my server and hope that you can still hear me. Yeah, so I think my okay, okay, good. So I'm, I'm rounding up right now. I, I don't know exactly what the issue is, but I'll just come here so I don't waste my time. And yeah, so you reload, you load the page. You're just going to get the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript file um, directly to instead of that being done on the server. So both methods are good. You can you can go with the um, client side um, generation, client side generation, um, client side rendering rather. You can go with the static side generation. But the good thing about NextJS is that you can do both in one app. It doesn't have to be one. You do, it doesn't have to be that if you're doing CSR clients, client side rendering, it has to be CSR all through. You can use CSR when necessary for a particular section of your component or of your application. In the same component, you can use both CSR and you can use both um, server side rendering or static site generation. Don't know why that word wants to mix up in my head so but you can use whichever one you want for whichever purpose you want in the same application in the same components and that's really um that's one good thing i like about nextjs so um that's it that's it that's it those are all the branches i have right now you can check it out um it, and that's how i'm able to use graphql in my next year's application so this is the link to the code base once again github.com slash everything is done slash next year's graphql multi app um link to the hosted app right here and um, yeah, this is, these are my social media, my social media information. So if you go to newdev.io slash Ebenezer, you're just gonna see everything um, about me there, my WhatsApp, YouTube, LinkedIn, and you can just click the buttons to access me on social media. So thank you very much. And um, I look forward to your questions. Yeah, I hope I was able to explain yeah. things in a way you can understand. Yeah, thanks Ebenezer. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions, um, leave them in the chat now. I actually add one. So <clears throat> yeah, when you're kind of making the decision to use the server side or client side uh, request with GraphQL, um, I was wondering like, say you're returning, you know, a lot of items and that you have the pagination built in. Um, is it better? Like, let's say we want to add a filter. So of the results you get across multiple pages and then you add a filter like, would you want to re-request everything or just load it all on the client and somehow bring it like in that, in that case, which I think is pretty common, like what, what would be the better approach there? Um, depends on the size of the yeah. query you, you want to make. Um, but for filtering, if, if, if you want to filter through everything that's in your current page, yeah, then it's, it's 
like you can do that on the client but most most times when you're filtering or when you're searching it's usually for things that are not on the page so client side clients making cl your client side um graph request is the way out go in that situation okay so you, you can you can also start with you can also start with the server side request to get those initial that your initial page and yep. then yeah when you start filtering you can make those extra requests on the clients Awesome. Um, and then does Next have like any different like caching configs than you would with any other kind of framework just, just because of the way Next works with, with regards to GraphQL? Um, I've, I've, I've not seen any, I've not come across yeah. any while working with it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's okay. almost the same as when working, although unless you want to address the issue I was talking about using and um, putting um, your GraphQL request inside of the use effects hook, because if you're making, if you're making that, or if you do, if you just put it, um, if you leave it bare in your React application during build time, that request is likely to, um, going to be made. So you, you have that kind of extra check for things like that. But I don't, I've not seen anything extra special because next yes, is still it's still basically React. So yeah. it's the same way Apollo GraphQL works with um, React. It is it, that's the same way it works with next yes. Cool. Awesome. Um, looks like that's all the questions. Thanks again for joining. Um, we're going to send around the recording and all the links and all that. Um, so yeah, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Later. Bye.